Hey everybody, uh, welcome to South Africa Wine Study. Uh, we did a presentation on this um, at the beginning of our syllabus and I felt like it needed to be redone and beefed up a little bit. There's a lot of information for South Africa that's pretty critical and that's out there. Um, the original presentation was about 17 minutes. This one I think will be closer to the 30, 35 minute range. Um, yeah. But let's take a look and we'll start with some map work uh, of the geographical units within South Africa. Uh, you can see here Limpopo in the north, Free State, KwaZulu Natal, Eastern Cape, Northern Cape. And really the region that we're going to focus on uh, most in this presentation will be the Western Cape. And as we move forward from there, there's a couple of other maps. You can see the old school uh, quartermaster sommelier's map. Uh, not super detailed. I love uh, what, what Wine Folly does with their map work. Uh, let's take a look at a little bit closer. As we look here, we'll see uh, not only the Western Cape, but the coastal region, the Cape South Coast. And we'll talk a little bit more, obviously, about these areas here on this coast uh, as we continue forward. But we start with a little general history of South Africa. Uh, Cape Town uh, was founded in 1652 by the Dutch East India Company. Um, shortly thereafter, in 1691, arrives Commander Simon van der Stel. And he's actually gifted favorable land that would become Constantia. Uh, Viticulture flourished when the French Huguenots, who were fleeing persecution, moved into the French Oak Valley in the 1680s and 1690s, most settled between Parle and Stellenbosch. And French Oak Valley literally translates uh, to the French Quarter, strangely enough. Uh, some believe this is not necessarily as important as others, though. Uh, Constantia, we mentioned before, was founded in 1685, divided in 1712, and then sold in 1778. Sold again to the state in 1885 when Phylloxera appears. In 1795, the British invaded and occupied South Africa, which spiked vineyard development. In 1861, the British abolished their preferential tariffs that had given South African wines sort of a fighting chance in the British market. This, along with Phylloxera's arrival, decimated the South African wine industry. Railway systems in the 1870s expands viticulture to Swartland and Robertson. Uh, Phylloxera strikes, of course, in 1886, as we mentioned, followed by the Boer War until 1902. Um, the KWV forms in 1918, and we will take a quick aside and talk about that uh, shortly. But there's something I always want to point out, a glossary of terms uh, to help understand what it is that we're saying, because you're going to see these different terms uh, quite a bit as we discuss different regions, wards, districts uh, of South Africa. Berg means mountain. Uh, Bry is barbecue, Dorp is a village, Groot is big, uh, Klein is actually small, Kloof is a, a canyon or a valley, Rivier, as you might have guessed, is river, and then Torin is tower. Uh, I said that we would circle back on KWV, formed in 1918. It was formed to regulate minimum pricing, areas of production, and production limits. It was made official in 1924 by the Wine and Spirits Control Act. Um, obviously, this created uh, a byproduct of overcropping and overproduction. So the KWV then set government-issued quotas that effectively eliminated any new vineyard growth. Uh, the end of apartheid in 1994 and the privatization of the KWV in 1997 spurred the renewal of the modern South African wine industry. Uh, the SAWIT, or the South African Wine Industry T Trust, was established in 1999 to speed the modernization efforts and reform apartheid-era labor laws. Um, the WO system, or wine of origin, was established in 1973, so predating even apartheid, and it requires the use of an approved variety tasting panel approval and contain 85% of a varietal or a vintage. If an area of production is listed, it has to be 100% from that particular area. So the interesting thing is, while South Africa has a really long history of wine production, the modern era gets started uh, only 25 years ago or so. Uh, I always like to take a look at our production areas from the largest to the smallest. Uh, we did this with Chile, and I think it's important to look at it with South Africa. Here, uh, your largest production area is a geographical unit, followed by a region, a district, and a ward. 
So if you can remember geographical unit, region, district, and ward get kaleidoscopically smaller. Um, within region though, in 2020, this year, a subregion was launched. And there's now a subregion uh, known as Cape West Coast. And it encompasses the districts of Darling, Lutzville Valley, and the western half of Swartland, plus the wards of Green Ecloof, St. Helena Bay, Lambert's Bay, Bambos Bay, and Coconut. Uh, and wards were enacted in 1994. In 2004, uh, there was a law enacted for single vineyards that may be used if registered and if it's smaller than six hectares, or excuse me, six hectares, excuse me. Uh, estate wines must be produced from contiguous parcels of vineyard and vinified and bottled on the property. And there's over 200 uh, that exist today. W WO participation is actually optional, uh, but you can't use any of the previous claims if you for forego the certification. So you can't put, um, you know, your geographical unit, your region, your district, your ward, uh, what variety is, any of those things. So basically everyone has to get in line with WO. Uh, the IPW, or the Integrated Production of Wine, which is a sustainability group, uh, formed in 1998. Uh, this helps go over not only sustainable viticulture, but work for, uh, excuse me, worker um, environments um, and workforce issues. By 2011, they expected that 85% of WO wines were IPW, and I'm sure that that's continued to move forward. Some just general climate and geography. We are going to get into each um, smaller region, a bit more detail as we continue on, but just in general, the Western Cape sits between 27 and 34 degrees in latitude, it's essentially a Mediterranean with a warm, sunny growing season. Um, important things to note here, the Benguela Current sends up cold water from Antarctica. Uh, the Cape Doctor is a southeast blowing wind, which lessens fungal fears and moderates temperature, primarily in the spring and the summer. Uh, Cape Alcujas in the south, the coolest, while the northern Cape areas can be arid deserts. Uh, Cape Point off Cape Town is where Indian and Atlantic oceans meet. Uh, the False Bay separates Cape Point from Stellenbosch. Uh, Orange, Oliphants, Val, and Tugela are major rivers that you'll see. Uh, Table Mountain, Simonsburg, Helderberg, and Stellenbosch Mountains also very important. And the wine growing regions are quite cool on the coasts and cut through a mix of mountain and valleys leading to very warm inland areas. Overall, with viticulture and vinification, you find, um, you find dry reds, you find dry whites, you find sweet passamento dessert wines, as well as botrytized. Uh, you find uh, sparkling under the Method Cap Classique or MCC. Uh, with these MCC wines, Chardonnay dominates the production. They can be made from any variety, any region, must undergo secondary in the bottle though, and rest on the leaves for nine months. Brutes here, uh, less than 15 grams per liter of RS, extra brute six, and brute nature three, and those are the three styles that are allowed for it. Uh, great producers, we always think of Graham Beck, he's based out of Robertson Valley. A couple of others are Lindude and Charles Fox. You also find fortified wines here known as Cape Tawny, Cape Ruby, uh, however the style may be. So really uh, uh, a good mix of styles of wines that are produced in South Africa. Soils in general, mostly granite covered with sandstone. There's not been any glacial or volcanic activity in the area for many millennia. So the soils are pretty simple. Um, a lot of quartz, slate and shale that dot the best vineyard sites. As far as what grapes grow well, um, Shannon's the most planted white. You'll also find Hannapoot, otherwise known as Musket of Alexandria. Cape Riesling, which is not Riesling at all, it's Crucian Blanc. Uh, Gewürztraminer Sauvignon Blanc, which is sort of the biggest riser. Chardonnay and Colombard. For reds, you'll find Pinotage, of course, that famous uh, crossing of Cinso and Pinot Noir. You'll find Bordeaux varieties. you find Cinso, which was once known as Hermita Hermitage, thus the name Pinotage. Pinot Noir, Tinta Barocca, if you're into um, uh, any of the Evan Sadie wines. Pontac is a tinterior grape uh, that's linked to Constantia. Um, here, Muscat Blanc Petit Grand was known as Muscat de Frontignan or Muscadel. Simeon was traditionally and historically known as green grape. And then you see a lot of brandy varieties dominated by Chenin Blanc and Columbard too. Pardon me. I do want to make a call out real quick to the Old Vine project that was established by Rosa Kruger in 2002. 
I was granted the SAWIS, an organizational body that was derived by the KWV and their record keeping, the Vineyard Registry in 2014 that dates back to 1900. So the prices are raised to incentivize owners to keep their vines. Um, so you can use a certified heritage vineyard seal allowed for vines over 35 years old. You see a lot of older Chenin Blanc vines for this. Super cool. I haven't seen any yet that have it on there. I look forward to, to tasting some. Or maybe I have seen it and I didn't know about it. Uh, geographical units, we said we, we would take a look at this a little bit further. Of course, Western Cape is where we're going to focus most of our attention. But I do want to call out the Northern Cape uh, with the Douglas and Sutherland Karoo districts. Within that, you'll find wards of Hartswater, Central Orange River, and Prisca. The Eastern Cape has one ward, and that's San Francis Bay, all the way super far east. Uh, KwaZulu Natul has two districts, Central Drakensburg and Lions River. Limpopo is ward and district list. And then Free State has one ward, and it's the Ria Trivia FS. Here's that map of the geographical units once again. But we're going to get down here into the Western Cape pretty quickly and take a look at some things. Here's the Western Cape. You'll also see uh, Oliphant's River up here in the north. Uh, you'll see the coastal region and Cape South Coast. And these two areas are going to be the focus of what we talk mostly about with quality wines. Reed River has some, and then Klein Crew has even less. So this is a, a, a snapshot of the districts that are here in the coastal region. So you can see every one of the districts. But again, we're going to focus a lot of our attention here to the, um, the Cape, excuse me, the Cape, the coastal region of the Cape South Coast, which is down here. Uh, so we'll talk about Swartland, we'll talk about Cape Town, Stellenbosch, French Oak Valley, uh, Parle, Wellington, Bree Kloof, Walker Bay, pretty important. And then, <coughs> excuse me, the Wine Folly map, um, which I always like, uh, love what she does. It's a little more detailed. You can see Swartland here. You can see Toolball, Wellington, Barrel, French Oak. Really nice. And then your Cape South Coast broken down into Walker Bay, Elgin, Overberg, Swellin Dam. And Breed River Valley here. We'll talk about those too. So your Western Cape regions, uh, we mentioned Breed River Valley region, the Cape South Coast region, coastal region being critical. Klein Karoo less so, Oliphant's River less so. Uh, there used to be one named Boberg. It was named after the Berg River. It was repealed in 2019. So if you have that in your note card set, burn that card. <laughs> it, it encompassed Parle, French Oak, Wellington, and Toolball, but only for fortified wines. Kind of weird. Um, so you also have districts that don't have a region, the Saris Plateau and the Saris Ward. Uh, then you have wards that don't have a district. Cedarburg, Lambert's Bay, Prince Albert Valley, and Swartburg. We're going to start in the Breed River Valley, though. Um, this sits obviously on the Breed River, um, separated from the coastal and Cape South Coast regions by mountains that block the oceanic influence. So here it's dry and hot. You get a lot of sand and loams, very fertile. The foothills showcase the sandstone, slate, and schist. There's a lot of co-ops and there's three districts. Breed Kloof, Worcester, and Robertson. And I'll show those to you real quick. You can kind of see them. Here's Worcester, here's Breed Kloof, and here's Robertson. And you can see how it's separated by the mountains from the Cape South Coast and the coastal region. Within that, the first district we look at to the west is the Breda Kloof District. Um, the Breda Kloof, make, Breda Kloof Makers Organization is led by Olafonsberg, and it's sort of bucking those bulk trends in favor of quality. You have two wards in Breda Kloof, and they're Goudini and Slanghoek. And I'm sure I'm butchering all of these names, by the way, so uh, I apologize if I am. The Robertson District, uh, to the east of Worcester and, and Breed and Kloof, is the coolest of the Breed River Valley districts. It opens up to the coast, allowing oceanic influence. Um, about a quarter of the country Chardonnay is actually planted here. You get limestone soils. <coughs> One great producer here is De Westhoff. You see a lot of uh, MCC or Method Cap Classique here. Uh, there's more than a dozen top producers. We mentioned Graham Beck. Here are your wards. I'm not going to list them all out because I'm going to mispronounce them probably anyway. So I'll let you all read them uh, in your own mental voice. Uh, the Worcester District, which sits in between and further north, Robertson and Breed Kloof. It's the largest but the least planted. Super hot, super dry. Frost is a, a big threat. 
Uh, and here you'll find uh, a local specialty known as Jeropigo. Jeropigo is a grape juice with fortified grape spirit. So there's no fermentation. And then there are four uh, wards here in Worcester, uh, Hex River Valley, Newey, Sherpenhavel, and Stetton. And one of the things I love about South Africa are the fun words. <laughs> Sherpenhavel is certainly interesting. Uh, we'll take a look here again at the super map before we start to get into the next region, the coastal region. Uh, your districts here, of course, Stellenbosch, Cape Town, Parle, Toolball, Darling, French Oak Valley, Wellington, and Swartland. Stellenbosch, uh, one of the more important ones. You see a lot of Bordeaux varietals. Uh, you see a lot of Pinotage. About 20% of all South African wine uh, or vine acreage is in Stellenbosch. Cape Town um, has its wards of Constantia, Oot Bay, Durbanville, and Philadelphia. If you had an old set of note cards like I did, you need to know that Tigerberg was repealed when Cape Town was formed. Uh, so you can ditch that Tigerberg, Tigerberg card. Um, Darling has a ward of Green Kloof. Wellington's wards are Blue Beauvlet, Greenberg, Lemitberg, Midberg River. So anything you know, that says Berg in it here. So obviously we talked about that meaning uh, hill, right? And then Swartland's wards are Malmesbury, Rabiqueberg, St. Helena Bay, and Rabiq's Rivier. Pretty, pretty important to know. And I think let's just pop back there real quick and take a look. You can see the large area that Swartland covers, right? And how much smaller it is when you get down here to Stellenbosch and French Oak. And so 20% of the wine coming from this one area is pretty impressive. The Cape Town District, we mentioned that merger of Tigerberg and Cape Peninsula prior to the 2017 vintage. It leaves us with Constantia, Durbanville, Oak Bay, and Philadelphia. Constantia was divided uh, upon that Vanderstahl's death into Groot, Klein, Constantia, and Berglier. Uh, here the Cape Doctor, that southeasterly wind, plays a large role. Um, you get a thousand millimeters, or uh, if you're into conversion, one meter of rain per year. Uh, you also see some Muscat, some Sauvignon Blanc, some higher elevation Shiraz and Cabernet Sauvignon. Uh, Durbanville is cool climate dedicated to Sauvignon Blanc primarily, with low rolling hills and very little mountain. Great producer there is Demirzal. The Darling District uh, has a singular ward of Greenacloof, uh, formerly a ward of Swartland, and uh, you see a lot of Sauvignon Blanc and Cinso. French Oak Valley, we mentioned uh, earlier that it translates to French Quarter, where those French Huguenots uh, took hold in the 1680s and 1690s. There's no wards. Uh, there's very little wind. You see a lot of pure granite on the mountains. So we mentioned without glacial or volcanic activity, your soil types can be rather pure and rather simple. You find some really great old vine Simeon. La Colline is the most coveted vineyard planted in 1936. Uh, in addition to that Simeon, you'll find Sauvignon Blanc, Cabernet, and Chardonnay. Just to give you a feel once again, here's the French Oak Valley. Yeah. The Parle District, which is home to the Netterberg Wine Auction and the KWV and SAWIT. Uh, here the soil types are a lot more sandstone, granite, and weathered shale, or clay at lower elevations, sand and rock at higher ones. This is hot and it's flat and the Berg River flows right through it. We mentioned before that Boberg um, district that was removed. Parle Rock Mountain in the center of the district. Um, and then you find Actor Parle extends behind it. Actor actually means behind in Afrikaans. Uh, so you have the Simonsburg Mountain as the border for Stellenbosch with prime viticultural land on both sides. Great producer on the Parle side is Baxburg for Bordeaux style varieties and Chardonnay. And then the Pardeberg Mountain in the north borders Swartland, although they're saying that might move to Swartland, it hasn't happened yet. Here you'll find Old Vine Chenin, Cabernet, and Shiraz. Great producer here, Niederberg, right? Wards are Actra Parle, Simonsburg, Simonsburg Parle, and Vor Pardeberg. So they all have P-A-R listed in them. It's a good way to remember them when they ask about it. The Stellenbosch district has a handful of uh, wards within it, Devon Valley, Yunkershoek Valley, Pop Guyberg, Simonsburg, Stellenbosch, Bottleary, Banghoek, and the Polka Dry Hills. Um, the most inland and noteworthy is Simonsburg, Stellenbosch. It's mostly red. You see a lot of Cab, Shiraz, Merlot, Pinotage, a little bit of Sauvignon Blanc and Chardonnay here too. Your great producers here 
Um, some of the best in South Africa are Canonkop, Rustin Vred, Warwick. There's a high amount of clay. Uh, the Banghoek uh, Ward is known as the Banker's Ward. And it's refer referring to the wealthy estates. So you have Kendall Jackson's Compensis, you have Dallaire Groff, Takara, Rainbow's End, uh, these are the highest elevation vineyards in the district at 640 meters above sea level. Uh, Molderbosch and Waterford are not in wards. The Golden Triangle south of Selenbosch is revered as well as Helderberg Mountain. Uh, you find a lot of granite, sandstone, and schist soils, mostly decomposed with some clay. Great Bordeaux blends, um, as we mentioned, and then leaf roll is rampant here uh, due to some dense plantings. <laughs> The Swartland District to the northwest of the region um, has a handful of wards, Malmesbury, Parterburg, Parterburg South, Rebeekburg, Rebeeks Rivier, and St. Helena Bay. I think we missed the Parterburg and Parterburg South wards on the previous slide. I want to make sure that we get that. Uh, apparently known for great olive oil produced in the region too. Uh, very hot and dry, very little rainfall. Um, here you see a lot of wide spaced, head trained, dry farmed bush vines. You'll find Chenin, Shiraz, Pinotage, and Sauvignon Blanc. Uh, Charles Back established a winery named Spice Route in the 1990s. Um, these are Mediterranean varieties and they formerly employed Evan Sadie, who then opened Columella in 2000. Um, Moulineau and Adi Badenhurst, who was raised on the Group Constantia estate, followed suit and declared themselves the Swartland Revolution. And along with a few others, they developed the Swartland Independent Producers category with quality controls. And you'll see up here, uh, all of the bottles have to carry this certification uh, if they are independent producers. Uh, as I mentioned, has to carry the group logo. 80% of the production must be under their own labels. Uh, they have to utilize native yeasts. There's no acidulation or tannin adding. There's no chemical fining or concentration process. A uh, minimum of 90% of approved varieties, only European oak with a maximum of 25% new, and they have to be bottled in burgundy-shaped bottles. Um, Swartland is known for sand-like decomposed, excuse me, decomposed granite in Parterburg in the south, where Sadie and Badenhurst are situated. Uh, you'll find slate, shale, and schist in the eastern portion, chalk in the north, rich red clay loam in Malmesbury, and quartz throughout. Iron Ridge Slate and Shale in Rebeeksburg and Rebeeks Rivier. The next district we're going to look at is Toolball to the east of Swartland. Uh, Fable Mountain is a great producer here. Tall mountains that form a horseshoe. The eastern foothills reaching 450 meters above sea level is the center of production. And you'll find shale with clay and quartz. And here's your Toolball. See Swartland all over here. Here's Toolball. The Wellington District, just south of Toolball, right here. Hot and dry. It used to be a ward of Parl. Uh, here you'll find Shannon, Shiraz, Pinotage, Grenache, Carignan. There's a handful of wards here, too. <clears throat> the Klein Karoo District to the east literally translates to dry and thirsty land. And there's a rain shadow from the mountains and Swelling Dam at Robertson in full effect here. Mostly bulk, mostly sweet. Uh, one great producer is Joubert Tredou. Uh, there's two districts and six freestanding wards, and those are listed here. The Oliphants River region, um, you know, up to the north of Swartland, has a district of uh, Citrus Dell Mountain with wards, Keener's Kloof, kind of setting itself apart for quality on the slopes of a sandstone mountain. Um, Scurfberg is pretty famously produced, that Chin and Blanc that Sadie does outside of the ward of Bikiner's Kloof. Fantastic wine, by the way. Two other districts, Citrus Del Valley and Lutzville Valley, known for its schist. Uh, and then there's three wards that don't have a district, the Bambos Bray, excuse me, Bambos Bay, Spruit Drift, and Vrindendal, which is also the name of the biggest co-op here. <clears throat> so now we've looked at the Oliphants River region. We've looked at Reed River Valley, coastal region, and Klein Karoo, which leads us to the Cape South Coast. Uh, it wasn't legally allowed to be planted until after the KWV abolished the quota scheme in 1992. We talked about how that was sort of uh, detrimental to new vineyard uh, plantings. Sauvignon Blanc, Shiraz, Chardonnay, Pinot Noir, and Cabernet Sauvignon dot the landscape. Here you have the influence of both the Indian and Atlantic Oceans 
and some really high quality winemaking. The districts that sit here are Cape Agulhas and the Elam Ward all the way to the south, uh, Elgin, Overberg, uh, with wards of Alanskloof, Graydon, Clean, Klein River, excuse me, and Feewater, Plettenberg Bay, and Swellendam. Swellendam has one of those famous fun words to say in Buffalo Jags, along with Storms Bay and Malgus for wards. The most important uh, district here, though, is Walker Bay, and its wards are Emelinard Valley, Emelinard Ridge, and Upper Emelinard. Emelinard uh, translates to heaven on earth. You also have Bot River, Sunday's Glen, and Stanford Foothills. This is home to Hamilton Russell and Tessa Lardsdall. Hamilton Russell uh, famously planted his vines here in, before it was legal to plant, interestingly enough. Uh, wards here without a district, you can see, handful. Uh, that Cape Algujas district is the tip of the continent. It's got that one ward of Elam. You have shale and iron rich uh, coffee clip, which is coffee stone or ferrocrete. Interesting. Uh, it's battered by wind in every direction and it makes great Sauvignon Blanc. And you can see it right here. Cool. The Elgin district was upgraded from ward. It's an elevated bowl that ranges from three to 500 meters, uh, mostly decomposed sandstone and shale and a thousand millimeters of rain, once again, a meter of rain. 80% uh, of the land is dedicated to apples and pears, so not a ton of grape growing, but you do find quality Chardonnay, Sauvignon Blanc, Pinot Noir, Riesling, and Merlot. The Overberg district uh, is actually over the mountains from Stellenbosch, uh, which makes sense, right? Overberg. Uh, formerly housed the wards of Wal Walker Bay and Elgin, uh, prior to them being elevated to districts. It's cold, it's wet, it's windy, uh, Lismore Estate in the Graydon Ward uh, is developed in the 2000s for Sauvignon Blanc, Chardonnay, and Shiraz, great producer. Uh, shale and slate over clay and limestone for Lismore Estate at 320 meters above sea level. Here you have to deal with baboons as a pestilence, which sounds awful. Uh, your wards are listed here, e e Landskloof, Graydon, Klein River, and Feewater. The Swellendam District, we love those wards. Uh, Malgus is home to Sane, a pretty interesting producer. Uh, close to the ocean on weathered round stone soils that focus on Rhone varieties between 340 to 380 millimeters of rain, a little bit less here, you start to see as we get away from the ocean. But then we mentioned uh, the most developed district here in Walker Bay due to Hermanus, a popular tourist destination, and of course Hamilton Russell and Bouchard van Laysen. Um, talked about those, those wards. There's a couple that stand out here too that weren't in the previous one, the Spring Fontaine Rim. Uh, Emelin Art translates to heaven and earth, Pinot Noir and Chardonnay that thrive in maritime climate. Uh, the Bot River has rocky shale with outcroppings of sandstone. Um, interesting producers in Gabriel's Clue from Beaumont. Uh, your Emelin Art Valley is only 125 meters above sea level, and then as you get up to the ridge, it's 400 meters above sea level. Um, quite a bit of rain at 750 millimeters. And you get shale-based clay for the ridge and valley, and the upper uh, emlinard is more decomposed granite. I guess I have to give you a vintage chart. Um, you know, I think these things are somewhat controversial. It's usually beauty is in the eye of the beholder, but if we're going to go by the book, um, 2015, 2009, and 2005 are the most excellent vintages in the last 15 years for South African wines. I sure hope you've enjoyed this presentation. Um, there's more on our page, uh, so check those out. And hopefully this will help you uh, continue to study and move forward in your career path. Cheers, everyone.